Hi there, this is Bob from CenturyAutoAir.com. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and reinstall an AC compressor clutch. Most compressors reinstall and come apart about the same way. Uh, General Motors tend to be the most difficult because it does require a couple special tools, so we will show you using a GM compressor. Keep in mind, a lot of compressors do not require any special tools because they will just unbolt and come apart. So let's get started. General Motors R4 compressor, same as almost all GM compressors. This is pressed on. Some compressors will have a nut holding the hub on, others will not. This is a real tight press fit, does not require a nut. We start with a removal tool. Install the arbor into the front of the compressor. Make sure you get this down as far as you can because it does take a lot of force to get apart and you can pull the tool and ruin the threads in the clutch. Turn the force bolt down, which pushes the clutch plate itself up off of the axle of the compressor or crankshaft of the compressor. The pulley is held on with a snap ring. Most all compressors will have the pulley held on with a snap ring. At this point, most compressors, you can take this slide off, maybe tap it lightly with a rubber mallet and they'll come off. GMs typically will not, so we do use a puller on them. You can use a three-jaw puller or a two. magnetic coil. On a GM compressor, these uh, R4s and most of the newer ones, this is pressed on here. If you put it in a vise, put a screwdriver on both sides, you can usually coax them off without a problem. When you put them back on, uh, do not bang on the ceramic part. Take a screwdriver, get it down into the center area, and you can tap them down. Uh, no fasteners, anything required. Most of your Denso compressors just use a snap ring. To put them back on, Reverse. This one went on a lot smoother than most. Uh, you're probably going to need a rubber hammer to tap that down, or we take an old GM bearing like we used in our other video to replace it, would set it down onto there. You can tap on at that point, or use the uh, clutch install tool to push that on as well. This one did not fire either, so we'll put our snap ring back on. Snap rings usually will have a beveled edge on them. The bevel always faces towards you. Install that. Then we take our hub and the keyway. The keyway, we get started partially onto the hub and then set it down onto the crankshaft of the compressor like that. The installer tool has its own bearing. So the center of the tool will screw down onto the threads of the crankshaft. When we turn this down, this then becomes a pusher and we'll push that hub plate onto the crankshaft. If you try to press this with a hammer or something, it's just going to distort and bend the hub. It's not worth trying without the right tools. On a GM, on the others, you may not need it. Use our wrench, turn this down. It varies from compressor to compressor as to how much force it's going to take. Now, this is our air gap. If you were to force this down all the way, it would lock on that pulley, so it has to have a little bit of gap in there. Typical gaps run anywhere from 20 to 35 thousandths. GMs I like to set right at about 30. I take a 30 feeler gauge, slide in there, spin the pulley, make sure it turns, and that, that will engage. Remove the installer tool, and if there's a nut holding it on the front, reinstall that. Because it's a press fit, there's no shims required. If this was a Denso compressor or many other compressors, it will take very small washers, and those are shims. Those shims will go behind this hub plate. When you put it down, you just tighten the nut, and that will establish what we call the air gap here. Once again, anywhere typically uh, 20 to 35 thousandths, GMs we usually set right at 30. Thank you, this is Bob from CenturyAutoAir.com. 
please visit our website for compressor repair parts. Thank you.